Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your March 2020 general readings. We're looking at the first half of March from the 1st through the 15th. Thanks to everyone for joining us here today. Welcome to newcomers and welcome back followers and subscribers. Thank you for all that you do in support of this channel, even if it's just tuning in. So this reading is for the fire sign of Sagittarius for the first half of March. So that's Sagittarius sun, moon, rising, if your Venus is in Sagittarius, or if you're cross-watching for a Sagittarian as well. Uh, as most, if not all of you know, general readings always resonate a little differently for everybody, so watching your other signs can provide additional clarification. If this reading resonates for you, or if any of the readings resonate for you, and you'd like to take uh, a deeper look at something and you'd like to reach out to me for a personal one-on-one -on -one reading just click on the little description link below click on that little arrow and you'll see some more info and contact details you can email me directly at maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com i would be delighted and honored to work with you i do offer a wide variety of readings in all the main areas of life <coughs> And I can usually respond to initial inquiries within the same day or the first 24 hours with more info. And as I do readings full time, it's all that I do. I'm pretty diligent at working with everyone's schedules and my own to get readings out to you or set up with you uh, in as timely a fashion as possible. So email me if you're interested and we will set something up for you. Okay, let's move right into this reading, Sagittarius. Our fun-loving, feisty Sagittarians. Let's see what the first half of March has in store for you. I am using the Gilded Tarot by artist Ciro Marchetti. And hopefully, I think this may be the last set of videos that I put out on my old computer and headset. I just ordered my new computer, so uh, hopefully setting it up won't be too painful. Okay, Sagittarius, first half of March. Okay, Sag, we begin with the Five of Wands, <coughs> followed by the Hermit, the King of Wands, followed by the Two of Pentacles, and from the bottom of the deck, overall energy for the first half of March is the Ten of Wands. Sagittarius, it looks like you are, it looks like you're, you're feeling tired, overwhelmed, exhausted, maybe frustrated. That's what the Ten of Wands represents. Tens also can represent cycle ending or cycle fulfillment and achievement. And I almost always feel a long standing energy off of this card, meaning that this is probably something that in order to feel this heavy you've been carrying for quite some time and maybe it started out with one or two wands and gradually just became ten so there's a sense of feeling tired of feeling maybe overwhelmed frustrated with something it, it might just be you know that you're going through a phase where you feel this way as all of us or most of us usually do and you know it may pass and it may be something else uh, because it does look like you also may be thinking about making a choice between ending something maybe and starting over or trying to figure out maybe a different way of dealing with something. We have the Five of Wands with the Hermit as underlying energy. So the Five of Wands can represent conflict, circular argument, fighting about the same thing over and over again, or a group of people doing that. Uh, it's not hugely serious. It's often considered rather petty energy. It can represent rumors, gossip. Nobody winning, nobody losing, nobody out to kill each other, but just kind of nobody willing to back down or compromise or you know, ev e elevate themselves or step out. So it just keeps going on and on and on. It can represent internal and external conflict, perhaps with a group of people just kind of going around and around and around. Now 
Now the underlying energy for that is the hermit. This can represent for some of you seeking out advice from perhaps an older or trusted advisor or mentor of some kind to get wisdom and clarity. It can represent that you may be in fact taking some time off or have taken some time off to kind of withdraw like the hermit does and get some quiet time to gain some more wisdom and insight from this based on your own experiences and spiritual knowledge and guidance. Uh, perhaps walking a solitary path and perhaps feeling like you know, because you have this Ten of Wands kind of heavy burden energy that you just want to uh, perhaps either take some time off or withdraw from the situation completely because you're not quite sure how to deal with it. I mean, next to the Hermit, we have the Two of Pentacles, which can represent, you know, vacillating between two different choices, two different things, two different options, being quite busy with that. And over, over that Two of Pentacles, pentacles that choice making kind of going between two things juggling um, not really able to see or take advantage of some really nice things going on in the background here we have the king of wands crowning it which can be you I think it is you for many of you Leo Aries Sagittarius energy sun moon or rising um, and the king of wands is next to the five of wands so you are perhaps either directly involved in this conflict or it's a group that you belong to or oversee or maybe manage or something of that sort for some of you, the King of Wands could be another fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, or very fiery, charismatic individual that's important or significant here. But for many of you, I feel like it's your energy. And there's a sense of, you know, kind of withdrawing a bit, taking some time off, stepping back to try and figure out what to do about this situation. How do I deal with it? Do I need to deal with it in a different way? Should I just walk away from it? Let's clarify this Ten of Wands. Because I've been asked recently about clarifying in general readings, I will, uh, you know, from time to time pull additional clarifying cards, but I don't tend to pull too many because in a general reading there's so many of you watching. The more you clarify, the more individual and specific it gets. Uh, which is something I try to focus on in personal reading. So I will clarify to a certain point, but not past that. But let's take a look at this burden, this heavy, kind of overwhelmed, conflictive energy. What's that about? Or what's this Ten of Wands about? the seven of pentacles and right behind it is the eight of pentacles <coughs> so pentacles is earth energy and and it usually represents the physical structure of our life what we do in the physical day-to-day -day structure of our life what we do to maintain or acquire stability security it could be money finances property real estate our job or the efforts we put into maintaining our day-to-day -day life and this the stability of that structure so the Seven of Pentacles is a card of reflection, assessment, taking inventory, taking stock of all the work that you've put into something, which the Eight of Pentacles represents too. This is hard work, uh, perhaps working a lot, getting up early, staying up late, perhaps overtime, repetitive work that may be leading to why you feel so burdened. But the Seven of Pentacles is about reflecting on that. Okay, this is what I've, the work that I've put into getting this harvest. I've done all of this work. What do I have to show for it? Does what I have to show for it meet what my expectations were? Should I make changes? Should I take what I can and leave and go start a new crop somewhere else? So again, it, it feels like a lot of you are just feeling kind of worn out with something that you've been doing for a long time. You've either been dealing with for a long time or you've been working at putting a lot of work and effort. and there's a sense of feeling kind of burnt out a bit Sagittarius um, and again this decision-making energy it looks like you're kind of taking stock of taking inventory of where your life is and the work you've put into it and is it worth continuing um, because in the seven of Pentacles you know it's not a ten yet it's not a completion or achievement so you have to ask yourself um, is that is the ten still what I'm working for in this particular situation am I content to let it rest at seven or should I leave and go plant a new crop somewhere else you know uh, what do I do with the work that I put into it so far and trying to make that decision uh, you know let's clarify this two of Pentacles this sort of duality crossroads choice energy what is this about 
You know, the one thing that I, I do often notice about the Two of Pentacles, and I have here too because of the general energy, is there's some really beautiful, I mean, this man is very busy trying to keep both of these pentacles in the air. And while he's doing that, he's missing some things that are going on behind him. The ship coming in, you know, your ship coming in, what's on it. Uh, dolphins, which are kind of harbingers of good news, good fortune. The rainbow in the background, the same thing. These are all beautiful things, but he can't see them because, you know, he's working so hard to keep both of these pentacles in the air. So there's that general feeling too. Let's see what that two of pentacles is about. Yeah, again, it's just kind of feeling a bit burnt out. And it could be that this too shall pass. Maybe you need to take a little, you know, vacation or time off or perhaps it's time for a change. Of course, this is where it kind of individuates because this is a general reading. So, you know, it may mean different things to different people in terms of maybe considering leaving the situation or just considering a different way to manage it. So the Two of Pentacles, that choice kind of juggling energy, we have death and right behind it, the Empress. So the Empress can be about fertility, new beginnings, that the time is right to sow seeds, to begin to plant something else. It could be literal fertility. Maybe you're considering having another child, but I'm not quite sure if that would <laughs> might contribute to feeling overwhelmed. Um, maybe some of you have found out that you're pregnant and you're like, oh, no, I, just, I don't know if this is the right time for this. The Empress fundamentally represents fertility time, self-love, self-nurturing. Could be that you really need to take some time off and try and figure out how you can work in regular, a, a better and healthier pattern of taking care of self-care for sure fundamentally. But, but it, it also represents, I mean, what does fertility time represent? self-love, self-nurturing, and fertility. It represents that now is a good time, the season is right, to plant seeds to sow something new. And death represents endings, transformation, something coming to an end so that transformation can happen. Um, and the t maybe the time is right to end something and start planting the seeds or getting ready to in order to, you know, p maybe grow a different crop, doing something different. So there's this, again, there's this kind of back and forth energy and, um, you know, the sense of feeling tired and burnt out and, you know, asking yourself, Sagittarius, I almost said Aries for some reason, maybe some of you are dealing with an Aries, um, asking yourself, you know, okay, I've put all this work into this, whatever it is. I mean, your other two sister signs, there was a distinctive partnership or coupleship at the center of it. I'm not necessarily seeing that here. It could be what you do for your job or your day-to-day -day life, supporting that. And you're just feeling kind of burnt out. Maybe you're, th and you're thinking, maybe it's, it's, maybe it's time to move somewhere else or do something different. Um, thinking about that, how would I do that? Is it the right time to do that? You know, that's just kind of the energy I'm getting for the first half of March. And, uh, you know, it's a short period of time. And I just feel like this is your, this is showing as your general energy. I would fundamentally, um, because uh, the Empress showed up as additional kind of advice, what you're considering, I the Empress is, is about taking good care of yourself, nurturing yourself, maybe even being a bit self-indulgent in whatever way that might mean to you, getting some time off, you know, or putting in regular parts of your schedule that, you know, you go get a mani or pedi or a massage or walk on the beach, you know, whatever it is for you that kind of makes you feel like this beautiful, sensual empress, you know, whom everybody is attracted to and all of that. So uh, fundamentally, that's pretty good advice during this time. It looks like you need to take some time for just yourself, whatever that might mean for you, and maybe indulge in some, some indulgent, self-indulgent sort of things that make you feel very empress-like, you know. Okay, Sagittarius, that is your reading for the first half of March. I hope you, uh, I hope it resonated for you in a way that's helpful. Again, if it, if it did and you'd like to take a deeper look at something uh, and reach out for a personal reading, just click on the little description link below, the little arrow, and you can email me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I would be most happy to work with you. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks, Sagittarius, for the March mid-month readings. Until then, as always, I wish you much joy, love, peace, strength, get some rest, 
And uh, I hope to see you back here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.